Welcome back to the stream, guys. Griffin able to tie it up here in game number four. We are going to game number five after this display that was put on by Toby, just dominated in the mid lane with this Aatrox. And had the help of his good old friend Tarzan, who affected both the mid lane and the bottom lane, made it look good. And whatever happens in the draft, what I ask for from Griffin is, show me these CC support and jungle duos where they can make things happen. No more situational stuff was loving how aggressive the playmaking was, and definitely Chovy was the accentuation on the top, just getting so many solo kills, having so much pressure and I invite double game five in China and Korea. We're no closer to knowing if RNG, IG, Griffin, or Genji will pick up their victories today. All about this best of one, really nicely done by Griffin, and they will have side selection in game number five. That they will, and I'm sure you guys can guess where they're gonna be going. Griffin has been enjoying the blue side every single time. By the end of this game, it just got disgusting yep. as Orn and Aatrox were dunking people left and right. Made it look easy. They were so far ahead at this point. Didn't really matter, but Gen G, they gotta come back strong. Not sure about that Velkaz into the Aatrox. Do you take the Urgot as well? You gotta consider, well, I guess Griffin, if they take the blue side, they would have the tell on that one the choice but either way guys we're going to a little video clip we'll be right back Yeah, 월드컵을 진출하고 나서야 이제 저희가 본격적으로 게임을 한다라고 말할 수 있을 것 같아요. 월드컵 선발전을 당당하게 뛰고 나서 저희가 한국에서 롤드컵을 나갈 만한 팀이 되었다라는 자격을 얻고 당당하게 롤드컵 가서 열심히 하는 모습으로 노력해서 꼭 우승하도록 하겠습니다. There you have it, the words directly from Viper, how he's feeling after the loss in the World Championship, now here on Death's Door, but also the door to the finals of the gauntlet up against King Zone. Can they make it? We're only one game away. The old adage was always, don't spend it before you've earned it, but that's actually been how Griffin have got their reputations. We're scrimming for Worlds, they said, when they hadn't even qualified for the LCK. They've qualified, they've almost won the LCK. Let's see if they can follow through on those bold words. Notice, no roster changes once again. Honestly, they've come this far together with this squad. We'll see what they can do here in game number five. No change in bans for the last three games, but notice the rise will be banned third, if at all, on the blue side. The order does change, but we don't know if the picks themselves will change, and there it is. Kaisa is banned on red side, so we will not see the same blue and red side bans four games in a row. Question is, is it Yasuo or Tom Kench on the right side here for Gen G? Maybe you consider, oh, this guy's gonna get Aatrox anyway. We're not gonna ban that, so maybe not the Yasuo when we take away the Tom Kench. They're really debating here, Griffin, what they wanna do with their final ban. Maybe even just using the time to anticipate the future that seems more likely with the Rise Band anyway. You want as much time as possible to think about what two champions Gen G will claim in response to your first pick. And your first pick will not be the Aatrox, so what does that mean for Tom Kench and Urgot priority? It's a really big question. I mean, the Yasuo finally in Game 5 is available as well. The Urgot, though, seemingly too strong, especially with Aatrox taken off the board. I would not be surprised, and they do lock it in. 
Good thing to mention about the Yasuo is it's not one of the two power picks for the red side because while Crown played it in 2015 summer when he was new to the Korean scene, they don't really have Yasuo players on their side. So it's not like that's something that slides to them. They're going to be more interested in the Rakan, which they have been claiming basically every game after the first on the red side. But will they pair with it? They won't be taking the Tom Kench after all. It's just going to be the lover's bot lane. So Griffin may end up with both power picks. Take it early here. And that means that Genji, they want to do a little bit of counter picking, I suppose. Griffin have to show some cards here. Now, you could just take Alistair, ignore the Tom Kench. It only was a very late adaptation for Griffin right at the end of the season and still have a playmaker. But your eyes are naturally drawn towards having a lot of power. They're actually going to go more towards, I was saying, ignore both and go to the Shen. Remember, the League of Lahens was around. His amazing Shen play. Ooh. But we're going to get a Vladimir bot lane most likely. And in the clutch in game five, I think the awesome dude is back. It comes back now. This is so strange of a timing. Game five with everything on the line, they say, hey, how about Shen Vladimir? How does that sound? Well, I have some numbers for you guys, right? Vladimir, seven and zero for Viper. He has not lost a game. Shen, seven and three. He's pretty good on that pick as well. So what you're saying is it's win rate time. How about a trundle? 12 is a pretty big number Ooh. too, Valdez. No jungler taken first round by either team is a big movement away. Galio going to be banned again. Where does Chovy go next? They've played a lot of Vladimir mid lane in Challenger, but that was rather before Chovy was actually able to play. He was a very big mid lane Vladimir player. So they have experience on that, but I'm thinking this is going to be Vladimir Shen bot lane. Let's just say that Vladimir Shen versus the Lovers bot lane is a disparity on paper. There's a lot of power on Genji's side, and both Vladimir and Shen are waiting for the later game. Hey, they finally banned Gragas. It took until game five to say, hey, Haru's Gragas is pretty good. Let's take that away. Haru's like, yeah, okay, I'll just play Camille then. Uh, Aurelia is going to get banned here. I was thinking maybe Yasuo, but they're more scared of Aurelia into Zoe. It's very predictable when the portal jump comes back, you can line up the stun and an all in from the Aurelia. So they just don't want to deal with that. Chovy's Aurelia also needs no introduction. Camille going to be the final ban. There's Ooh. some respect at Haru, who okay. is undefeated on the Camille, the only top flight Camille player, I would say, in Korea. So, jungle and top lane. Seems like top lane will be a counter pick unless we just see an Orn or a blind tank matchup. They could last pick jungle, I guess. And it seems like they will last pick jungle. Which of Haru's aggressive picks will get through? We mentioned at the start, the table setting was it might be the be two best NAR players in Korea and yep. Cuve in the clutch will take his knock. Up against that Urgot, most likely the Urgot could go mid up against Zoe, but I suppose that will be revealed now by Griffin. Eight seconds left on a couple of picks, and the Yasuo showing its face, kind of obvious from that Zoe, and well. well most likely be mid lane as well yeah. for Chovy. He is the better of the two, even though Viper had a win streak earlier in the season. He's been Losing more recently, but one, of course, in the LCK final. Final pick here is going to be Jungle. The Sejuani fallback makes some sense, but I think it's time for Haru to go for a very aggressive pick. What's it going to be? Oh, how about a Trundle? That's one way to say, hey, Tarzan, you won't play it. How about me? I'll play that, that pick. It's still pretty good. Hard CC from the Jungle is something we called for. We get it. Hard CC available from the support is something we called for. We'll get it. Kind of incredulous that Tom Kench and Alistair on 8.15 have fallen through the draft. But to me, I think it has to be, how do the awesome dudes work? They fall back on the Vladimir that he has not played in a very long time. It's been seven and oh since maybe even the first round, Robin. They fall back on it. How will it look against Gen G? And remember guys, this is Griffin. They have set in their heads. There's a specific way to play the game. They pride themselves, CV Max, saying we are super smart. We know everything about the game. We can outsmart our opponents. And this is not just done on a whim. They went back into the room and they said, we are gonna mix things up. They are going to play Zyra Khan. What is our strategy? And well, this is what they came up with. Shen, Vladimir, and the early game not gonna have too much fun up against Rakan and Zaya, but we'll eventually get to that really scary part. And 
Viper looking for his eighth win in a row on the Vladimir. This game can go some dirty places team fight wise for Griffin as it goes on. If they close the gap, oh, the Wombo comes in and goodbye, Zoe, goodbye. Gen G, but the cost is a lot of lanes in the early game look a bit flimsy. So I'm interested to see how this goes. A lot of flair from the side of Griffin and some balls as well to pick Vladimir Shen into Zyra Khan. Well, guys, the countdown is ready. It's game number five. Who's going on to the next round? Is it Griffin or is it Gen G? Let's get into it now. Comes down to this, everybody's cheering for their respective teams, but also tears afterwards. They just wanted a game five. It's just about as good as it can get in here and in China, everywhere around the world. It's League of Legends time. And these regional gauntlets just keep giving in Korea. Of course, the surprise double victors of Samsung Galaxy. In the past two years, we're seeing Gen G try to fight through. There's a real chance they take all 15 games to qualify for Worlds if they do make it to face King's Own Dragon X on Sunday. But Griffin wants to stop that today. They want the defending champions to not be able to make it to the World Championship. Roller on the Zaya does have one annoying thing to deal with. If you remember way back to the first half of summer season, it's what's your first item? When you're against an awesome dude like a Vladimir, you want Lifesteal to answer his life game from Doran Shield and his Q. Zaya doesn't build Blade the Ruin King, so do you just build a Vamp Scepter or something like a Hex Drinker, then go into your standard build? We saw Deft of all things start corrupting Potion on the Zaya in the past, so I'm very interested to see how Ruler sustains through what can be a frustrating laning phase, whether he has priority or not. Definitely a important micro point down on the bottom side. I'm uh, I'm curious to see if Chovy is going to be unlocked in these last two games. He was chained on the Irelia and his team fighting was fantastic. His team was too far behind for him to be able to do much. He got killed in game three due to Haru and his fantastic Gragas, but now he's on the Yasuo. It's banned four games in a row. And now they finally gave it to him. They banned the Aurelia instead. And can he actually do it? It's a good matchup into the Zoe. He carried on the Aatrox. He must be feeling really confident right now. It's just about, can he actually perform in game number five? I mean, at level one, it's a disaster for Shen and Vladimir. They can do nothing to Zaya Rakan. Level two, he already showed Q to land, so obviously did not have Torn at level one. Level two, there's some gimmicky all-in chances. I want to draw your attention to summoners and also keystones. Aftershock on the hands, Predator onto Viper, but they took Exhaust Ignite, something you can do with awesome dudes a bit more free. I don't need those teleports or heals as much. So they do have double combat summoners to potentially turn around, especially if Sejuani's there for a gank. They're going to be just chilling down the bottom side. If they can stay even on CS, that's going to be a win for them. And so far, it's looking like just that. Sejuani might just head down there to help them out, or maybe after level six, like we saw uh, in game number four. But uh, so far, Tarzan just pathing up towards the top side, where the Gnar, also the other champion we mentioned, new here in game five, but we thought it would have been much more prolific. We would see it more often here in this one of Sword versus Cuve, but the first time now coming out, Cuve, the original gangster on this NAR, uh, trying to make a name for himself once again in game five. I think early levels, the NAR will be very comfortable. The problem becomes is the moment he gets exhausted out of a Mega NAR, if Ergot starts, then the base stats go away and the ult seems pretty academic to pick up kills. It could be very, very punishing as the matchup goes on with two items especially. I think Righteous Glory comes in and things get pretty uh, terrifying for the Gnar in particular. When it comes to Yasuo, we always talk about knock-up synergy. Do remember that the Ergot has that situational knock-up with his E to complement the Q from Sejuan. It's not quite Malphite or Alistair, but there are some tools around to allow Chovy and engage and, you know, Based on game four, who's to say he can't do it all himself like he's been able to in some of these clutch games? 
Jovi, definitely. As we mentioned, the youngest player, it's it's hard for, usually, for young players to come in and deal with all the stress and handle it and be the big carry, but the two guys here in Korea, Jovi and Yukal, the super young ones that just continuously show up in high pressure situations, it's a good sign that we'll have more of these young kids that show up in rough spots in the future as well. It's the new generation, right? It's what people are talking about with Griffin and Yukal and these young players who watched when they were very young, some of their opponents, and have formed their play around that. Speaking of forming play around, Haru is lying in wait here, but doesn't necessarily have the most priority for mid, so doesn't actually end up fighting. Thing that strikes me about Tovi is, it's that crazy thing where I don't think he knows he should be you know, off his game or he should be intimidated. And it's one of those things where maybe you just don't tell him. You know, that's the weird part <laughs> yeah. is, should you tell him that actually he should be yeah. a little bit off? You know, he should, should be a little bit different. Or maybe you just lean into the fact that if he plays the same with his mouse and keyboard wherever he is, that's a pretty amazing trait to have. Yeah, I, de I definitely say Toby is the more innocent of the... Uh of the two, right? Definitely. Oh, you cast the, not trash talker, but he's, I'm bringing the title for score. Yeah. I'm doing this. I'm going to do it. Whereas Chovy's like, wow, I just did my job. You say, I'm a good player. I like League of Legends, and I just love playing with my friends every day. This is great. You cast like, I'm going to kill you. If the power of friendship <laughs> takes you to worlds, hey, man, who am I to say anything? Yeah, I, I love the fact that they have totally opposite personalities, basically. I, it's not opposite, but different because they're both relatively positive and happy-go-lucky, I'd say. One a little bit more reserved than the other, but it's pretty cool. I like it. Don't forget about BDD. He's, he has a lot more experience, but uh, still very young, at least in the mid lane. I would say he's still part of that new era. Viper, two months after his last Vladimir game, is going CS for CS with Zyra Khan. So you would say this lane is going incredibly better than expected as Shen support was rotated out of consideration among most teams in Korea for, well, the laning phase is a bit AFK outside of some gimmicky all-ins, so you can't run it. Those are the words pro players are using to me. It's not possible. So <laughs> for him to bring it back in a game like this, and for them to go so competitive, credit to Viper and Lahens for leaning back on what worked in the past and making it work again on patch 815. Yeah, sweet. Boots first with the Predator, did Viper, had four pots, only needed to use one. Goes back by his cooldown boots and a big rod. That's a nice purchase. Yeah. It's needlessly large and it has a lot of AP. It's going to begin doing a little bit more damage. You don't really see the Vladimir begin to pop off until, you know, level nine plus. But still, the lane has been going well so far. I would expect it to continue to go well. Looking towards a Spellbinder for one of his engage items. We should again adjust our expectations for the game a bit as it's all about getting the back timing here for Ruler. The reason why I say that is what it allowed Griffin for Viper to be playing. Yasuo, Vladimir, and specifically the Vladimir is the big win rate champion is he's the engager. He gets two items and he's ready to fight rather than waiting for his moment on Caitlyn that just never came two games in a row. As the Vladimir, he pops Predator, he rushes in, and from there he's able to start things that the rest of the members can end. So it's a different role for Viper, and one that he's shown a huge aptitude for earlier in the season. Yeah. Another question that we haven't asked yet is Crown, after being pummeled in game number four by the Aatrox on the Velkaz, can he come back here on playing Zoe for the first time tonight? and uh, actually do well. I mean, this is a guy that's totally opposite his lane opponents, right? He has tons of experience. He's been on the world stage, final stage, twice in a row. And, you know, he's dealt with it, the highs, the lows. He knows everything. Can he come in after game four and that poor performance and actually shut down Chovy? got to say, uh, Zoe's more often have been held in check rather than popping off in recent memory and... Very hard to manufacture a lead in your own lane against Yasuo. It's very, very hard to get a solo kill onto Yasuo outside of, say, level 2-3 with a lucky pickup. So I think it's going to be a product of what happens around him. He's going to farm it out, show up with some magic penetration and illusions, and then if his team's winning, you can definitely extend that lead. If his team's falling behind around him, it'll be very hard to manufacture a lead solo as the Zoe. 
Uh, looking to pick up first blood around the 10 minute mark here is the top jungle duo for Griffin. Tarzan waiting in the brush. Haru oh. is nearby, but he runs right up to it. Can he land this? He's going to land on in. There's Sword, but the flash comes out of Cuve. Nicely done. It was a kind of slow, steady engage, and he was able to flash away from it. Felt like Sword and Tarzan went on the same page that there was some orb walks back before the engage happened. After the W went wide from Tarzan. Not the most convincing, but they get a flash. They get a summoner out of Gen G. So still overall successful. Trovi sitting on three daggers, working towards his Phantom Dancer. Always hard to hit a skill shot on this man. Trovi is nothing if not slippery, whatever he's playing. Yeah, he's definitely had his fun on Zoe. I really uh, played a bunch of Oriana. We haven't seen that tonight. We aren't going to see it. Maybe in the King Zone series up against BDD, but so far he's liking the much more aggressive picks: the Yasuo, Aatrox, Aurelia, and the Zoe, of course. A spot here that the Rift Herald has been started, but we see already Haru is well on to stealing away the Raptors. We'll see if they can get the Cloud Drake. They certainly are set up for first. Adamir, I don't think he's going to be looking for anything too fancy, but you feel really good about trading a Rift Herald for a Cloud Drake if you're Griffin. How about we try this again, says Tarzan. He uh, does not have his ultimate just yet, but he can use that Rift Herald if he wants to begin the push. They're walking up here. Okay. Gonna try to go for the kill, actually. Ignite comes in with that spell book, and well, he's getting super low. Nice ultimate, though, into the wall. The Shendel is not gonna be enough. First Blood is gonna get there for Cube. And now Tarzan, just on the run, throws his ultimate just to survive at this point. We also got Haru coming up the river right now. Not sure if Tarzan can get away. Looks like he will, but a botched dive gives the first blood to Gen.G. Juve in the clutch on the Nar. Griffin got greedy. Like you say, they could have just plopped the Rift Herald. There was no interrupt up as Juve was in mini Nar form and either taken the turret or gotten it very low. They put trust in the kill, but they can't get him into execution range. If the first Q hits, I believe the ult, which had already been cast, it would have been enough damage done, but with the transformation, he's not in 20% range. The ult doesn't come off, and through the Shen ultimate, the Urgot goes down. That's a real feels bad moment. Even the Glacial Prison on the back side of that, where it's just, okay, the dive went super wrong, and now I don't have my really long uh, cooldown ultimate for the Sejuani, one of the main reasons you play her in the jungle for the mid game. And uh, it just felt rushed because uh, the he wasn't exhausted. The Narbar was close to full when they started the dive and was cemented quite early. The Q missed on the dive. They still went for it because they had the ignite from the unsealed spell book. They were already in a really comfortable spot. There was no need to rush. But the rush means a bit of an item lead here for QV is bot lane. Viper's just going in for a trade. The CS still pretty much exactly even. The ruler just five ahead down in the bottom side. And we'll see if he can carry. You know, he had that one moment on the Zaya in game number three. He'll also get his moment to shine in this one. Small note about the bot lane. We wondered what ruler would do when it came to actually finding a lifesteal item to trade. What instead we're seeing is went Storm Razor. Notice it's not going for Fleet Footwork. It is the lethal tempo for max damage. Try to kill an Urgot in a team fight. We're just seeing Predator used off cooldown to half health ruler and try to keep him away from being in an offensive position. Speaking of offensive position, Haru is walking off and just trying to add any pressure they can. About a 10 CS lead here for ruler. Like Haru going down, just clearing it out. He doesn't have to, you know, dive them or even gank them to put pressure. It's just a small trip down in the bot lane, saying hello, saying, hey, you remember me? Haven't been on the map too much, but uh, I still exist. And now they're looking for a play on to Chovy. Maybe we can bait him on in. Haru just waiting. It's not going to come through. Rift Herald again claimed by Griffin, as we know, ages ago now. Where will it be used? Could be used topside. A lot happening oh, here. They're going for the go. bot lane dive. Four on two. The dodge circle is already used. Nice the flash. there from Court JJ. Not going to be on point. Has to get out of this one. The hens does go down, but the TP on the backside means it's only going to be one kill. 
Meanwhile, up on the top side, though, Griffin have the push. That's right. They put down the Rift Herald. They teleport a bot lane to stop the turret going down as fast. I don't know if they can repel 2v4. Your first thought is no. Here we go. They're trying to hold the turret. Okay, everything missed here by Crown. And also, Cortez pretty low. Finally hits a panel star onto Viper. And still, the Rift Herald pushes. This is much better right now for Griffin. But Viper gets super low. The flash on him from Crown also picks up a heal. Is it going to be an up? No, no, the Life Seal comes out. And, all hits. It and it goes down. Crown going too deep. And Griffin are going to capitalize. The push is still going in the top lane. Game fives are about moments. The timing on the ult from Lehens was perfect. Sniped out of the air was the Zoe. Crown thought he had enough damage to kill. He did not. And it's a third charge from Shelly. Oh, boy. That's not what you want to see. Gen G, it was their moment to be impatient. Their moment to go too far. And perfect play out of Griffin to stop it. Now they're trying to run away with this one. They're going to catch Haru in the mid lane, too. Just randomly farming at another kill to the board. A macro moment for Griffin after two macro victories for Gen G in games two and three, and it had to be in the clutch. It had to be the fairy tale squad. They get so much topside, they didn't even lose their out of turret bot lane. We're gonna get the replay. We were skeptical that Urgot and Vladimir could hold this turret. Crown thought he had the kill when he picked up the flash healed first, goes in for the damage, but he actually gets the empowered Q heal, the Shen as well, oh, and then Sword snipes him away, and around the world people cheer because the Zoe getting sniped by an Urgot is a feels good man moment for most. That's the world we live in now, guys. The Urgot coming in and how shutting is the, down Zoe. How is the Urgot the protagonist <laughs> and the cute skipping Zoe the bad guy? That is just where League of Legends has gotten to. That's just the edgy rift we're playing yeah. on, man. That's the way things go nowadays. And well, it's a huge moment for Griffin. They do get the lead off of the back of that. They're not running away with it just yet, but you already have a kill onto the Yasuo. You get one on the Urgot, who's going to be unbelievably tanky now. And they do have that gold lead, 1,200 ahead. Going to be pretty happy with their position. And uh, Chovy's going for the I'm ready to kill you in the mid game build. Already very close to Infinity Edge. Speaking of killing. Trying to get that play onto Crown here, but there's the trouble bubble. Trying to pr predict it here, but Haru is nearby. They're not going to dive the turret. All right, Griffin, deep breaths. You back away. Griffin got the lead from that play, and now the top side is a very, very long lane as the charge onto the inhibitor turret is going to be very difficult to return to. Urgot can't really push out Nar for three minion waves and then take a turret. That's not how it goes, so... Still is a nice immediate injection of gold into the game. QSS from QV as a second item, not an ideal one either. Knows the Sejuani has set a tent up top side and doesn't want to deal with that. But we're ready to pivot now that Tovi almost has an Infinity Edge and start playing a group game all through the lane with that Yasuo. They clear out the ward put down earlier. It's another Cloud Drake, so it's one Tarzan could afford to give up. No suicide missions into the pit for that one. Griffin haven't been prioritizing the dragons all night long. It's 13 to two in favor of Gen G. Tarzan is trying to make a play once again here, but good vision control. You take a look at the map. Gen G have four control wards down in great places. They may not have seen Tarzan come in, but cleanse on crown, he should be okay. And Genji just have a very Korean macro setup, which is what Gen G are known for, right? Slow and steady. Put down your control wards, take what's owed to you because you've had vision for so long. But I think the best of Griffin and why I'm so happy to see them on a CC bot laner and a CC jungler is that I think they do play the hybrid style that the LPL uses much more towards that side. They do like games like this where, well, we don't have any wards down, but uh, if Sejuani and Yasuo show up, you get the hell out of there, whether you see them next to you or you see them in vision. And that is the LPL style. I think that is what is the best way to play League of Legends right now is we got these items that it doesn't matter if you see us coming, we're still taking your lunch money. Yeah. You're announcing it to, hey, we're coming for that. <laughs> and that is what Griffin can do when they've got early power spikes like a Vladimir, when they've got CC on their jungler and their support. And now Gen G are going to see them coming a mile away, but they're going to keep going towards their Nexus and keep watching Griffin get leads. Definitely in the name of the game. Ruler down here up against Sword. He can just 
shell away at Sword. Sword's not going to take any damage, but he knows it's one on three, so he has to give up that turret. Nice little play by Gen G. Griffin elsewhere on the map. Tarzan was up top, and Chovy was back in the base. So good timing there by Gen G to make it all work. I think the Yasuo was definitely the reason here. Getting that Yasuo has been so nice for the side of Griffin. Still, Yasuo has got his items. He doesn't have a stopwatch yet, but that's kind of the core. Then he just starts popping off. Maybe QSS. We'll wait and see the decision there. Without a true marksman, a ramming is not the happiest time for Griffin, as we can see. We're very zoomed out here. They want to pick and then a free mid lane turret. Crown has no idea where they are. Yeah. Well, let's just space check a little bit. They know, where they know where they are now. Okay, well, Crown's going to eat it right there. It does have the cleanse. Will we have the counter engage? The TP is coming in. The knock on the lands. The, it does get canceled, actually, but still will go down. Tarzan, as he got a little bit too close, trying to go a little bit farther. There it is. The Sleepy Trouble Bubble onto the Shen. Do they have a follow up? It's a lot of damage out of Zoe. There's the pillar. And down he will go. Two for zero. Goes over to Gen G. And does that mean Baron is the question that Gen G might have to pose to Griffin? Really nice in interrupt by Cuve. Didn't know where his Meganaba was at. You definitely start the Baron here. Tarzan's dead, but Chovy is lurking. Ooh, no Vladimir ultimate right now, but Chovy, can he do it himself? The TP early comes in here from Sword Crown on the opposite side, picks up an ex exhaust right now. It's perfect for them up against the Yasuo. Just trying to do the damage to this Baron. It's going to be incredibly close. Sword over the wall, just trying We're to going poke. In. Here comes Shen into that back line. Genji, they're so, so low, but the exhaust is there. Toby trying to go deep. Sword gets the kill Toby's on Haru. And there it is, the spike comes out from Ergon. And two kills on to Yasuo. Griffin, they push it in. They get the kills and the Baron. Sword got the smite from the Unseal. Spellbook killed the Trundle and smite, and he just did everything. There it is, there's the man on your screen. He did it all by himself, had his buddies by his side, but Gen Z, they make that crucial shot call. They go for the Baron, it does not pay off. Even the Shen came in alongside the Urgot. Sword, he performs, he does everything, and now Griffin are massively far ahead. And people say, why unsealed Spellbook on the Urgot? Because if it goes right, you do literally everything. He changes to it. And he's able to come into the fight with Lahens. It's a 4v5. He comes in, takes down the enemy jungler. Wait for that smite. My name's Urgot. I only do everything. What a play here for a sword. That is how you want to go on to the next round. Literally carrying your team on your back. The rest of them were routed. Tovi just picking up the pieces, but it really was all sword. Gets the ultimate onto Haru, makes him useless, pushes everybody else out with the fear, smites the Baron by himself, and there you have it, guys. We have our MVP for game five <laughs> already. This guy has been criticized the whole way through. Who was the weakest member in Challenger? Rather or Sword was the answer. Most people would say Sword. Tovi now the starting mid laner, and after the Aatrox was OP meta, fell away. Didn't look great in the season, but I think some of that was the incessant Cho'Gath drafting, even when it didn't work for the team. It was in a lot of lose-lose scenarios. In a moment like that, when you need your name to be one that is sung rather than one that is forgotten, the Griffin fans will be singing Sword's name tonight. What a play from him, and a great set piece once again by Griffin. It's going to be one to remember for quite a while. What if Griffin from this go on to Worlds and, you know, get a very top finish, maybe even win the whole thing? I don't want to say that's going to happen, but we would go back to this moment and say, remember game five against Gen G when Sword went in there and was the MVP? It's moments like this that bring your team into Worlds. It will have to beat King Zone, and they still have to close the door on Gen G. But if you guys are fuzzy on how it worked, he teleported in, then waited. He was he saw he was waiting next to the boss band for a while. He was waiting for both Lahen's ultimate and the three, four, five seconds of the lockout on the unsealed spellbook to change it to the smite. Yeah. Came over, was able to get the kill and the smite. Removed the smite, had his own. That is definitely. DIY winning a best of five coming through from Sword. They don't have the world's best siege, so there's still a chance that Gen G can delay this game. You notice Tarzan waiting in the wings. They do have some really nice dive if everything comes together, but again, can get risky. You don't want to go too fast, too furious. 
Either way, the slow push with that Baron is coming on in. Lahens trying to control up against Core JJ in the middle. The push from Viper over to the right side. Sword by himself up against Gnar in the mid lane. It's not getting much, though. Again, their siege is very, very poor on the side of Griffin. Just a little bit of damage here. Mostly just cannon minions that are barrened up and are doing the damage. They do it, albeit slowly. Ten seconds left, though, so slowly but surely doesn't lead to the base being broken. It's close, but no cigar. That it is. But that fight that they had, sure, Sword was the MVP. Who benefited the most out off of that? Chovy. He just picked up a Guardian Angel after that. He picked yep. up the scraps because he got two free kills from people running away from Urgot. And that means now, yeah, Chovy wasn't the carry of that fight, but how about the next fight or the one after that? This guy is going to be shredding people. Zoe is not going to survive. Not just Zoe, even even uh, Haru on the Trundle might be uh, pretty weak at that point. The Rakan certainly not going to survive. Look at that. Look at that graph there at 21 minutes. But do notice the scale. Notice the scale was very small. This is not a titanic, unmanageable lead. It's actually 4,500 gold. So it went from zero to about 5K, not a 10,000 gold lead. So scale is important, but definitely all because of the one Baron play. Regardless of everything we've said and the obvious excitement about Griffin now being very close to a Game 5 victory, there still is their poor Siege, they're needing another Baron most likely to break the base, and also there's definitely five people read up to be an equal match winner on the side of Genji. Crown will be kicking himself for some of the players earlier. Genji, there's always the chance that someone answers. This is a team that has won the gauntlet twice in a row and wants to proudly defend the World Championship in Korea. What an honor that would be to defend the crown. If they were to win Worlds in Korea for the back-to-back -back victory and to defend it in their home country, that would be so big for a Gen G team that is still fighting for the recognition of the fans when it comes to famous big orgs here. They do lag behind SKT, Kingzone, KT when it comes to fan bases. Griffin still building one of theirs. They're in a great spot, but until we see that next explode, we're not going to sing just yet. We got to wait, and then there's one more step for either of these teams. King Zone watching very, very closely on this series. You have to imagine back at the team house, the analyst, analysts doing their analysis, team members discussing with the coach, what are we going to do up against whatever team comes in. It's, uh, it's going to be hard. I feel like Gen Z have proven that they deserve to be on the same level as all the other teams in the gauntlet. And Griffin also proving now that they're not going to go down without a fight up against Gen G. I mean, they made it all the way to the LCK finals, just one game away from winning the entire thing. So super competitive up at the top here in LCK. That's the way it's been all summer long amongst the weird metas and everything else. But doesn't change the fact that we have four or five teams that are right up there towards the top. If you ask to kind of disseminate what we saw over the case of LCK Summer, is there a word better, especially with KT winning, than excitement? There's been so much happening. There hasn't been agreement in metas. There have been people trying different stuff. If you think about it, storyline this much earlier, as it's just Tarzan clearing a blast plant, was awesome dude carry team versus 80 carry team. And now that feels like just a long time ago that that actually had to be something to talk about and yet in game five it comes back to that which is just yeah. so so cool it's been a very memorable lck summer and another five games with king zone that's all i ask for whoever the victor is yeah it's going to be hard for that's the dream get us 15 games in the gauntlet here's the baron though it's a big one Griffin, if they get it, they could win the game. Gen G, that's their ticket back. Also remember, it's not just a ticket, it's a big ticket because there's no wave clear on the side of Griffin, really. So it's the sort of Baron buff that feels guaranteed. Rubber stamp to take turrets. It's QV, taking a lot of damage, but he's dealing out some okay. too. This is a huge fight if Sword goes down here. He's not going to be there for the Baron fight. Here comes Viper, though. The shield in effect, and can he do the damage? Shen as well, trying to jump on in. This is three people to kill the Gnar. He's able to do us. This is way out of that one, but it's still going to go down. No Baron, though, for Gen G. It's enough. But this is what Shen can do. He can join instantly, and the Vladimir runs down. Gen G do not try the Baron. They don't have the tankiness to do it with their remaining members. So they back away, they end up just losing a member. It started so well for Cuvee, but it ended so well for Griffin. 
Not sure exactly how the fight started, but it, it does paint a picture for this Nar who's building a lot of offensive items. Can he just go 1v1 against Urgot in the future? Hold the phone, though. We got the Baron started here. Cuve, he's still dead. 20 seconds, he can teleport in. Doesn't take that long to kill it. Seems like they're brute forcing it, though, Tarzan. We'll see trouble, but he could just go down, though. Uh, that's okay. They're going to knock up Haru, though. Down he might go. The locket comes in. Nice double knock up there by the Rakan. The four man charm as well. Toby getting so, so low. There's his guardian angel, Viper, coming in. And Urgra from the back. Sword is here to carry his team again. Core JJ is going to have to hop away, and Tarzan is going to go down the ruler. It's his time to shine now as the slows come. In from Cuve. Looks like Lahens is gonna be the sacrifice. Cuve, he wants more though. Coming on in. Can he land the ultimate? Or did he bite off more than he could do? No, he's gonna take out Vladimir and he's looking at Sword too. Will he go for it? The answer is no. It's almost a full ace coming through from Gen G. This is what happens when you have the marksman in the end of the game. You can pull off the team fights. They're gonna get a baron from this, certainly, and this series lives on. This is unbelievable, guys. 30 minutes into the game, Gen G, they're down 5,000 gold and they win a fight. They're gonna get a Baron too and a Baron power play. They've only taken out one turret as well. Gen G, the world champions, they are not going down without a fight. This is the strength of a world championship team as you hear the big cheers from the Gen G side in the clutch after a year of not looking like world champions. It was almost ironic title in regular season. They are coming back raring to go. It looked like it was set up to be successful. Great wind wall comes through. And then look at the teleport coming in. How is he always there, Sword? He's definitely the hardest done by if they can't win this game. It's a great flank, but it's so hard to have threat on ruler when you don't fight in areas that are open where you have wards. In this case, the control wards, the real MVP. They lose so much damage. They're so low when they get the first kill that eventually Cuvay can chase and chase to the tune of a Baron on the side of Gen.G. And remember, the wave clear on the side of Griffin is situational at best. That it is, Corey JJ also fantastic counter engaged to bring that fight back into their hands before the Urgot did come. They're looking though for the Nar. Did he make a mistake this he time did. around Cuve? Uh oh, that's not what you want to see with Baron buff and no wave clear on the side of Griffin. Yep. He throws away his life and his Baron. Cuve giveth, Cuve taketh away. It's not a small thing like you're alluding to. We talked about how set up this Baron was to be. Let's say Ram and uh, cool wave clear. I'll take that turret, I'll take that turret free inhibitor. It wouldn't have ended the game, but it would have gotten them a big foothold into what has been largely Griffin dominated post 20 minutes. So Cuve going down, the Yasuo working on Sterix. First Ocean Drake of the game. Not even going to be relevant, but it does depower an Elder Drake. Here we go. Again, we take a breath. How many more moments will decide this game? Will it be a pick? Will it be a team fight? I think a team fight would definitely be the biggest calling card of these two teams who have both prided themselves on team fights. And at this point, you feel really bad for Sword if they can't win, because I don't think an Urgot could do any more than what we've seen in the first 30 minutes. Swordman, he wants to be well known as one of the guys who's able to try to take this win for his team. Gen G, though, four members still with Baron and a couple of guys that did go back. They're going to take one turret. That means that the gold lead is only 3,000 as we do get along. Sure, Vladimir is going to be crazy late game. The Yasuo will as well. But how about the Zaya in the late game as well as that Nar? Can Ruler actually carry this back? I think we should take a moment now. We haven't really talked about previously to note that only now the fourth item is finished for Vladimir. who has a bit of a cheaper build than a Zaya. And crucially, his first three items were defensive and utility. It wasn't quite Proto Bell, but it was Spellbinder, Banshee, Veil, Zonia. So it's actually a very low damage. Vladimir, who was supposed to be counterbalanced by a very high damage Yasuo. But if none of that threat is on to Ruler, pretty much no damage is going his way. The Void Staff will help for certain. But the Vladimir true kind of team fight damage threat has been back ended. It's probably going to be a last item death cap before it really truly starts to be team fight impacting. So it's something small to note, and it's been such a small detail that we haven't gotten to it in the first 35.
He'll most likely be working towards the death cap next. So this item into that one, it's yep. it's going to be a Vladimir that could even just one combo ruler if he's not able to get any life steal in. It's uh, it's coming down to this, guys. Down to the wire in game five. You see the gold graph is getting a lot closer to that zero line now. Do you know Urgot is pushing with no vision, so he has to back away. Won't be going any further. We're getting to six items, so the vision is being removed. Note that Genji actually has a lot of control wards in the inventory, and Griffin have basically none, just the one onto the Vladimir. That does mean that Crown and Haru kind of have two very situational items. They have double stopwatch, very useful in a team fight, and ward stacks. So I think Genji are going to be a bit more patient. They're very much about, let's take our time and use a vision advantage for a pick, rather than pure battle stats, because they do have less of those. You're talking about that one control ward, there it goes. Up in the top side in that brush, and now they do not have much vision of that river. Crown does have a very interesting build for Zoe. We've seen a lot of double stopwatch builds. Way you do this, if you don't use your perfect timing, you can actually rebuy it and then have both the stopwatch and the Zonias for five seconds of stasis. You think Cassidy, you think Swain, you don't really think Zoe, but you can take an aggressive portal jump that looks like an int and turn it into five seconds of baiting with double stopwatch. So we'll wait and see if Crown can make the big play. He'll be still be frustrated about that dive went wrong in the 4v2 bot side. Maybe there's a five second stasis play that can send the victory to Gen.G. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, too, because Griffin, they got to look in the items and actually call that out. And who knows, in the heat of the moment, are they going to recognize that? Are they going to respect that? It's going to be perfect. You mentioned baiting plays. That's something that Nar loves to do, hop into the back line and ult four people after everybody groups up to try to kill the Zoe. So we'll see. Halfway there when it comes to AP purchases. Just a bit of visual lag, guys. Don't worry about that, although I'm sure some people are having flashbacks to the podcast a few days ago. Watching here, all about blue buff control. Pretty low value blue buff to Griffin, so they could give this up. Crown in the face of danger, not scared. He has cleanse. He has so many different buttons he's got to press on that Zoe. It's not an easy task. Good news, all the buttons are up summoners-wise as well, so plenty to play by play in. Who knows how long? Again, table setting. Elder Drake, equal value, no infernals, no mountains. So just about the two-stack Elder, Baron buff. It's almost 40 minutes, so it's almost a full-powered Baron coming through around the 38-minute mark. Again, the control ward and vision advantage around the pit is what Gen.G will be granted with all the control wards they've had. They can take a shot now knowing they have a lot of control vision down and a lot of room to take a decent back and be there for the fight. Take a look at the golds here. It looks like Yasuo actually had the most in the game. He has the most kills as well as... Okay, let's take another look. Feels bad. 2,200 gold disadvantage with the Zoe. So it's three items in a stopwatch. So really, it's about bait and whether a trouble bubble can open up with Ruler killing someone. Very low threat coming through from both the opening burst salvo and even just the skipping around W passive from the Zoe. So Griffin, continue to look around, continue here. We need to see if Gen G can get a pick. Our first one forward. Oh, they're starting yep. it. Well, the Urgot splitting, so they want to make something happen. Yep, they have the vision on it. They know this is started now. The nice sleepy Slow trouble down. bubble onto Viper. Will they have enough damage? He's actually going to zone Viper entirely out, but look at this wombo combo. The head's getting way too deep in Tarzan. He's going to go down too. Just at the end, is topped in the face, but Sword able to take out QV. Four to three right now. Sword hopping forward, and he's not able to get over the wall. He's going to get sleeped up too. Is Chovy, and he might be able to go down here. Viper nowhere to be seen. He's just running away. As Chovy himself trying to take them all out. The knockup is not on time, actually, but the Sleepy Trouble Bubble is there. Double kill to Ruler, and it looks like Gen G are going to get that Baron. They won't be able to close the game from this if they go for Baron. Instead, they're actually backing one member, the Zoe here. Viper couldn't find a way in. There seemed to be a split call because he had it multiple times. He could have tried to go in with everything up. He chose not to after being zoned out by the Zoe. All he is going to get is an inhibited turret. And you better hope he finds a better spot to pick up a kill because there's a second Baron buff coming the way and then no 
ability to wave clear from this side of Griffin is going to need to be overcome by the right engage, and it might be against Elder and Baron. So we talk about what happened here. Crown just runs at Vlad, and we already said it's super low damage from Crown. So actually, this is a great trade of resources. You're happy with Zoe being out of the fight. In the fight, core JJ runs all over the back line. Sword is a bouncer with Chovy, and they do get away Cuve. But then these two walk up to try to control, and Vlad never walks with them. And that disagreement ends up losing them the maximum. All the buffs are there, and now it's get the right engage or lose for Griffin. KT's not in the game, but it feels like a roller coaster. It's back and forth in the best of five, down to game five, and it's I feel like it's changed hands over and over again as Griffin looked good at one point, Gen G looked fantastic now, obviously. Two minutes, two minutes 30 on Elder and Baron, respectively. Now is the time for Gen G to push in and get some massive objectives. No more mistakes from Cuve. He already had that mistake card. It's, yep. it's out of it now. He has his teleport. And now is their moment to go in and try to win the game. Big advantage in flashes on the side of Gen G as well. Two down, but three up. Meanwhile, most used by the side of Griffin. Viper, as we know, held on to everything. Didn't go into his fight, but this is the time. Oh, Crown goes forward. He's got five minutes of stasis, but will it matter? Look at the Wombo from the Vlad, and Toby gets on in there. The Fear takes down two. Crown is too low, but look at Ruler. He's able to take down two, and Kube gets the ultimate on him. Toby disappears, and it looks like Genji may have to stun it. Ruler is alive. It may just be the ace, as only Viper is left. Two kills will do it, and Ruler knows it as well. Ruler could keep space through all of the flashy ultimates. They had no threat onto the Guardian Angels. Neither are popped, and the Griffin Fairy Tale ends today. Gen G, they're doing it again. The gauntlet magic comes in. Ruler, he knows he did it for his team. Fantastic play at the end there. Game five goes to Gen G. We will have them face off against King Zone. The world champions are running the gauntlet again. Ruler cries. Actually, he's just probably crying because of all the stress and all the build-up of what has been a really long best of five, four and a half hours with no pauses. QV is his usual non-moved self, but Gen G are doing it again. That regional gauntlet magic cannot be denied, and it actually trumps the fairy tale magic of Griffin. They come away with a lot of respect, but could not win LCK. They will not go to the World Championships in Korea. Meanwhile, on the side of Gen G, they have a favored historical matchup against King Zone, and King Zone and Dona checking themselves before that all important final best of five in two days. Riller overwhelmed for a moment there, but he is the one left standing. He knows. You talk about the relief, the stress. He finally does it in the end. This time, it's the winning player that's crying or trying to hold back tears at this moment in time. He definitely deserves it. We were talking about, is he going to be the carry at the end of the game? He absolutely was. It was a perfectly played team fight. And the only mentions of Ruler among the community in the last two months have been those times he threw the underperformance at Asia Games. You know he reads that stuff or has people tell him about how what people are saying. Same guy that won MVP of the World Final a year ago. Genji are close. One best of five from going back to the World Championships. Spare a thought for Griffin, who have had a wonderful year. They were able to rampage through Challenger and came oh so close to making it both to Worlds and winning LCK. They will not be able to make it any further. They have so much to build upon. But sadly, Valdez, the cruelest is that the young players now have a whole lot of time to think about the what ifs because their vacation starts tonight. This is a replay for the ages. They get the Baron to push, and Crown, we talked about the bait. There it was, and Ruler totally safe the entire time. I don't believe the Hemo played hit Ruler. It did not. He doesn't even lose his overshield. He was just exhausted at the start of the fight. And when that Wombo doesn't lead to deletions, when Chovy can't cut them down in the first round, Ruler's there to do it. This is why the awesome dude meta died, is because the Marksman eventually reign supreme. This is quintessential, eventually, wonderful team fight from Gen G. Unbelievable story for Gen G once again. That's a damage graph. You'll say, hey, look at this, coach. I'm, that's the reason I only play 80 carries. 37,000 for Ruler as he crushes the opposition. 
Gen G and Griffin. Mistakes made on both sides in game five, but unbelievable, really memorable plays. Don't forget about Sword and his Urgot. Don't forget about Ruler and his Zaya. We'll all remember those for a very, very long time to come. And wow, what a treat to get two best of fives that go to game five and to have games like that. I will never forget the 2018 regional goal, and that's before we have the third best of five. We will have a returning team either. Gen G or King Zone will return to Worlds to join KT and Afrika. Already qualified. We will get some words. I see Haru and Kuve up there for the interview. I think it's probably a good idea to give Ruler a little bit of time to compose himself. We definitely agree. Can't wait to hear what they have to say. I'm going to throw it over to G Sun for the translation. Let's hear it. Thank you guys, and this is Jason with today's interview translation. Here we are joined by Haru and Kyube from Genji Esports, the main characters of today's match. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a long match. How do you guys feel? Five full set games in two games in a row is my first experience. I kind of lost my focus during the games. But at the end, I was able to concentrate fully. And I was able to pick up good results. I think that was the key for today's victory. How are you manage, able to manage the concentration? I think we fully focused on having communication between the players. Cube, you were a very strong top laner in top, top lane. We still got one game left, but I'm really happy that we are in a really good vibe right now. Well, actually, today, the second round, I heard that you guys were quite confident, but five games is not easy, right? <laughs> well, for me, I was really aware of Tarzan because I thought he was a really good jungler. I, th I think his, I, I, but at the same time, I think I am a very stable player, so I felt quite confident. But recently, people are saying that the most important position is jungle. Does that kind of add you, adds you more pressure on your shoulders? Well, not like a pressure. But I feel like if I just don't make any mistakes, I have the power to kind of extend the game. So it's not a pressure at all. I guess you are quite confident. Well, all my players are doing so well. So in the late game, I think we are always very easy to win the game. They Cube. I think you just dominated the game on Nor. Game five. Well, you played Aatrox and then your champion Nor came out. So how was today's game? I think I was just doing my role. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. I think you overperformed, like, above your level. It was a super play. Other people might say so, but in my standard, I just did my role, I just did my job. The game five, there was an early turret dive, and also in the mid lane team fight, you just went in fight 2v1. Were you confident? Well, speaking of that moment, it wasn't a good time, time for Griffin players to try diving me. I think the players were a little bit rushing, so I was able to pick up the kill over there. I think that was the momentum for Genji. Please give it, 
give it a warm oh, round of applause for Cuban. Genji of the fall. You guys all once again proven yourself here. And your last opponent will be King Zone Dragon X waiting at a higher seat. Is there any last message you would like to say? So since the first round and it's the second round, we have been picking up consecutive victories. <laughs> I hope we can remain this flow and take down King Zone. <laughs> and Kyuve? Even though King Zone is a strong team, but we are really in a good mood. So I'm kind of, I kind of have the confidence that we are will be able to pick up victory against King Zone. Yeah, I agree. The confidence is the key for picking up the victory. So it was another very extended and intensive series for today, and I will pass it back to our casters to wrap up today's series. Thank you. Well, there you have it, guys. Down to five games once again. The last game is the longest, as it always seems to be. And man, those guys, they played their hearts out. We were so close to counting them out after Griffin got a huge lead in game number five, and the awesome dude composition looked good. But in the end of the day, Gen Z were the better team, the second team to take out Griffin in a best of five. They're going to be going up against King Zone in two days. That's going to determine what team is going to be going to Worlds alongside Afrika and KT. I feel like both of them deserve to. I feel like Gen.G played their hearts out tonight, and they're actually really, really good. I think they deserve more fans. That was some really fun games at the end as well. Um, King Zone, we'll see what their, what their current form is as well. You haven't seen them in so long. Death, Taxes, and King Zone Dragon X losing to Gen G this year, though. Almost every turn, Gen G and KSV have been too good for King Zone, but someone else did the favor. As you can do the favor of getting off the camera. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> He's someone else did the favor, and that ended up, of course, really allowing King Zone to avoid the Gen G matchup. Now in the clutch, the weird thing is. We weren't supposed to have KT versus Genji again, and yet King Zone are kind of in KT's <laughs> shoes where yeah. this is the moment where actually history doesn't work for them. They've had a lot of time to be on the sidelines, but Genji have played 10 games. They've only gone six and four in those 10, but they've also fought through a lot of adversity. So at the end of the day, it's so hard to equate, but maybe you give that small advantage to Genji. It's hard. But, you know, these guys are so good at playing best of five specifically, right? They, in the regular season, they were in fourth place behind so many of those other top teams just ahead of Afrika, who eventually turned out to be pretty awesome as well. And then we get to the best of five s stage. They make a couple of mistakes. I feel like if they were more consistent, then maybe they go on to Worlds and they have another really fantastic run. But things are worrying, I feel like, in some of those games where, you know, Crown in game four just looked lost and QV just running on in and dying in game five. Some of these mistakes, if they're cleaner, I feel like they absolutely would be the favorites up against King. But Zone. let's kind of put a bow on top of Griffin, whose year does end here. That's the end of their competition. They're definitely going to be the team with this long break to think, why did we lose to Jin Air in that series that seems so straightforward for them and not get to 14 match wins? They had the inside track. They just need to beat bottom teams mm. to be the number one team instead in that pack and ended up being, of course, overall second behind KT Rolster. So kind of gave up that thing. Why didn't we win game four against KT where we had a very big lead and compositionally looks set, set up to win? You think of this series, some of the drafts over the course of this year and even this series where they returned to what didn't work. And those are kind of the rough points on what has been an unbelievable year. This should not cloud what has been the most meteoric rise, I would still say, in League of Legends history, given where the scene is at in 2018. But at the end of the day, those rough edges was just enough in the clutch to stop them making worlds and to stop them being LCK champions. Yeah, it's a, a little bit of a pity for sure. I know a lot of people wanted to see Griffin at Worlds, but they fix up their act for next year. Maybe they're the team for 2019, who knows? But guys, that's gonna do it for us. We'll see you on Sunday. Gen Z up against King Zone should be a blast. See you then.
저한테 롤드컵은 그냥 제 인생이라고 생각을 하고 거기를 만약 못 가게 된다면 은 저의 평가도 엄청 떨어지고 그러니까 저희가 국제 무대에서 좋은 경기력을 보여주지 못했기 때문에 꼭 나가서 해외 팀들 다 이기고 한국 팀도 다 이기고 싶어요. 일단 어느 팀이 갈지 모르겠는데 그리핀이랑 젠지를 만나서 먹고 싶어요.